Swifter, we're going to finish off our Bip the Guy app by covering the UI Image Picker Controller for Photo Library and Camera Access. We'll learn everything you need to implement the UI Image Picker Control, including how to request user permission to use the camera. We'll cover the critical concept of delegation. We'll learn to check for camera availability. And we'll select and use images from both the photo library and the camera. Swifter, I hope you're ready for your close-up. Let's code! The control that allows us to pick an image from either the photo library or the camera is known as the UI Image Picker Control. Now we're working with the UI Image Picker Controller, and this is something new we're doing in iOS. Now one thing that I've found useful whenever doing something new in iOS is to ask myself these key questions. This isn't an exhaustive list, but I hope you find this to be a useful piece of advice. And we'll refer to these questions whenever we implement new techniques in our later apps too. So these are the questions. If some of the terms are unfamiliar to you now, we'll cover what you need to know in this video, and there'll be lots more info in future lessons. So first, do we need to import new frameworks? Nope. Do we need a delegator data source? Yes, the UI Image Picker Controller needs a delegate. What about protocols? Yes, too. The UI Image Picker Controller delegate, but also the UI Navigation Controller delegate. What about required methods? Technically, they're not required, but we really can't get anything done unless we add two did finish picking media with info, and image picker controller did cancel. Anything else? Yep. We need to declare and initialize a class property that's of type UI image picker controller, and we need to add privacy strings to the info P list. Now this last bit is because anytime an app developer works with anything that's privacy sensitive, like accessing the camera or accessing the device location, Apple requires app developers to gain explicit permission from the user that these tasks are okay. Well, in the info P list, we put the strings that will be shown when Apple asks for permission. Now, you used to need to put in a string requesting for access to the photo library, but this is no longer explicitly necessary, but we'll do it anyway. This will be in an area called privacy, photo library usage description. We do absolutely need a string for the privacy camera usage description. So let's get user selected images in our app. First up, since it's the easiest to forget, let's set those two privacy strings in the info P list. Now you'll find the info P list probably just above the products folder in your project navigator. Click that. Now the info P list just has a bunch of app settings. We've been able to ignore this up until now, but anytime we deal with something that's privacy sensitive, we're going to have to get in here and add a new privacy string. Now we're going to need to read some text in the first column and it's kind of cramped. So let's widen the column heading. And the way that we do that is if you move your cursor right up between the key and the type column heading, your cursor will turn into this thick black line with arrows in both directions. And if you hold down your cursor, you can then drag left and right to resize the column, just like you would in Excel. And now let me show you where we need to click in order to add a privacy string. You want to move to the very last row in the very first column. And on the right hand side of that column, you'll see a little circle with a plus sign in it. That shows up when you move your cursor in here. Click on that and it'll add a new row. Now you'll see that you can type in this first column. If you scroll through this, you'll see a ton of different options, but you can jump to the one that you need. We're going to start typing the word privacy with a capital P. We jump to the top of all of the different privacy settings. Then the one that we want to click on is this one here that says privacy dash camera usage description. Now that this setting is in the P list, we want to click on the rightmost column here. And this is where we enter the string that will show up when iOS asks for explicit permission to access the camera. You can see we can enter text now. And why don't you type in this app requires access to the camera if you'd like to add a photo and press return. Then we'll add this string that's no longer required. Now we could probably skip this, but just in case Apple changes their mind and reinstates the requirement for this permission, We'll click on this little circle with the plus again in the last row that we just added. This creates another row below it. We can start to type in privacy with a capital P, then scroll down. These are listed alphabetically until you find photo library usage description and click that. Then we'll click this empty cell on the right and we'll set this privacy string to this app requires access to the photo library if you'd like to add an image. Press return. That's it. Now let's declare and initialize the UI image picker controller and set its delegate. So let's head back to viewcontroller.swift and right underneath where we declare our audio player, we'll say var image picker controller equals, so we're going to initialize this as well as declare it, UI image picker. And then we want this option here, controller. Look what code completion says. It says it's a view controller that manages the system interfaces for taking pictures, recording movies, and choosing items from the user's media library. Well, we don't care about the movies, but the others too, we need press return. And to create an object of this type, we'll put in open and close parentheses right afterward. That's like like saying, go to the UI image picker controller factory and slap that new one you just created into the variable image picker controller. Now down in view did load, let's delete this comment we don't need. 
and we'll say image picker controller dot delegate equals self. Now here's the scoop with delegation. Our image picker controller does a ton of stuff without us having to write any code, but image picker is going to need us to write code when it does some things. When, for example, the user has selected an image or pressed the cancel button in the image picker controller, the image picker controller needs our code to do something resulting from those user selections. So by setting the image picker controller's delegate property to self, we are allowing the image picker controller to specifically make requests in the form of calling functions that we're about to write in our view controller. So self means the current class, which is our view controller. Now, if we didn't set the image picker controller's delegate, the image picker wouldn't be able to access these two functions we're about to write. So if you ever have a situation where you've created an image picker controller, it looks like you've written the functions properly, but the methods aren't running, you've probably forgotten to set the delegate like we've just done here. Now we need to adopt two protocols, and we do that after the colon in the view controller's name. Now we could do it right after the class definition, right up top, but a better way to do this is to write an extension. Swift extensions are super powerful. We'll tap into this power in future apps, but right now we're just going to use these for organizing our code. So we'll put all of our methods that have to do with the image picker controller in this one extension. And we'll add this to the bottom of our code just after the last curly in our class. And the way we create an extension is to use the extension keyword, then the class name, which we see up here, it's a view controller. So I'll just copy that, paste it below, then a colon, and we specify the protocols. Now, protocols are a complicated topic, and we'll cover them in much more depth in future videos and future apps. But for now, just consider it to be a requirement when using a UI image picker controller that we add a colon after the class name, and we add these two protocols, UI image picker controller delegate, and then comma, UI navigation controller delegate. Then open and close curlies. Now in our previous slide, we said we need to have two methods if we want to get anything done. Now code completion will enter the entire function call for us if we just enter one word, did finish picking media. And you'll see one option shows up here. It's an image picker controller method, and it says tells the delegate, which is our view controller, that the user picked a still image or a movie. Press return. Now what's going to happen is we're not going to have to write any code at all for the image picker controller to show the image library to allow the user to pick an image. But when that UI image picker controller detects that the user has clicked on an image, image picker controller calls its delegate which is this class. It's gonna call this function, and in this value info up here, this is where we can access the image that the user clicked on. So this is what that delegation is all about. Apple's code is gonna do a bunch of stuff. When it needs our help, it's gonna delegate a task to us. One of them is this function here. It's an Apple function, and it's called by the UI image picker controller when the user clicks on an image in the image library. So the user can select an image. The user can also click on cancel. So how do we handle cancel? Well, we've got a method for that too. That's image picker controller. Start to type that in and you'll see this one option shows up, did cancel. Code completion describes this as tells the delegate that the user canceled the pick operation. Delegate is our view controller class right here. Image picker doesn't know what to do when they click cancel. That's up to our code. And because this view controller is the delegate of the image picker controller, it can receive this request. When it comes in, this function fires and we'll eventually write code to handle the cancel. So press return. We've got the skeleton, the outline or stubs of those two functions that we need. Now we also need to write two additional functions. These are ones we'll write on our own. We could name them anything. For the first one, we'll write func access library, open and close parens, open and close curlies. And this will be the code that handles if the user clicks on the photo library button in the alert that shows up if they click on that little camera icon in our app. And below that is the function that will handle accessing camera. So we'll say func access camera, open and close parens, open and close curlies. In fact, let me change this name to access photo library instead of access library. That's a better name. Then let's scroll up and change our function photo or camera pressed. And in the completion handler for the action alert for the photo library button, I'm going to delete the print statement and the to do comment in there. And I'm just going to call access photo library. And below that in the completion handler, if the camera button is pressed, I'll delete the print line of the comment and I'll call access camera. Now back down in our extension in our function access photo library, what we're going to do is we are going to show the image picker controller. Now remember, we could show the photo library or we could show the camera. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say image picker controller dot type in source and select source type. Notice what code completion says, the type of picker interface to be displayed by the controller. That's what we want. Select it and press return. Then we'll set this equal to and we'll say dot and we see some predefined types in here. One of them is photo library. So highlight that and press return. Then we just call present. This is the same present that presents any kind of view controller. We use the same thing when we presented an alert controller. We'll say present, select this option here. The view controller name is gonna be image picker controller. Animated will be true and completion handler will be nil. 
After that happens, the image picker controller takes over, iOS handles everything about the image picker controller until the user has either selected an image, and if it does, then the image picker controller calls the delegate, and it will run this function that did finish picking media with info, or if the user canceled the image picker controller, that's when the image picker controller calls this function here in the delegate, image picker controller did cancel. Now the access camera function is going to be just a little bit different. We're going to check first to make sure that the device that we're running on has a camera. Now you might say, don't all iOS devices have a camera? Well, your simulator doesn't. So if we didn't add this check and we ran our app on the simulator and we tried to access the camera, our app would crash. It's just an extra if statement in here. If UI image picker controller dot and start to type in is, and we're going to select this option here, is source type available. Notice this returns a bool, and code completion says returns a Boolean value indicating whether the device supports picking media using the specified source type. Press return to select this, and for the source type, put in dot camera. Then open and close curlies. We'll also have an else condition. Open and close curlies for that too. Then inside the else clause, we show up here if the camera is not available. So we'll call show alert, which is the alert function we wrote in the previous video. The title will be camera not available, and and the message will be, there is no camera available on this device. Now, if this is true and we do have a camera, we're just going to say image picker controller dot source type equals dot camera. And we'll make this very same present call that we have up here. So I'll just highlight it, copy it, and paste it down below. Now, before we handle what to do with a picked image or a cancel, why don't we go ahead and try a build and run? And before we can build and run, we've got to at least put some comments in these two code markers that are highlighted in red. So I'll just say comment to do code goes here. Copy that, paste it down below. Now, if I try to build and run, oh, still some errors. Let's scroll up here and see what they are. And oh yeah, our call to access photo library and access camera are both inside of closures. So we have to add the self. We can just click the error ball and click on fix and Xcode will correct this for us. So now let's go ahead and build and run. Let's click on the button with the camera icon down below. We get our three button action sheet alert. What happens if we click on camera? Our access camera method is called. It checks to see if the camera is available. It's not, so we get this message that says camera not available. Works perfectly. So now let's go back here into our code and why don't we handle the image picker controller did cancel. Now I'm gonna highlight and delete this comment. We don't need it anymore. Since the UI image picker controller is presented modally, we use a dismiss call in here. Just say dismiss. Animated will be true, and the completion handler will be nil. Now for the code in did finish picking media with info. Now info, this parameter that we're passing in here, is actually going to hold either an edited image or an original image. First, we check to see if we can get an edited image. So we'll use if let for that because we might not. So we'll start this line with if let edited image equals lowercase info. That's this value being passed in here. Then we open bracket, and what we're finding in here is a matching value for what's called a dictionary key. So we're essentially saying, inside this thing called info, take a look and see if you can find an edited image. Now the way we get at the edited image is a little odd. We have to say UI image picker controller dot info key dot edited image. And it's good to let code completion complete the spelling. Then we'll say as question mark. UI image. Now what as question mark UI image does is it tries to take the value to the left of the word as and convert that into a UI image. This conversion process is referred to as downcasting and we're trying to cast it or convert it into another type. And that type we're trying to convert it to is a subclass or it's based on the original type. If it can do this successfully and it's non-nil, then it takes this UI image value and it puts it in the constant edited image to the left of the equal sign. Then open and close curlies. And if this works, we get a non-nil value that's a UI image. We'll say image view dot image equals edited image. And just to show you, if you option click on top of edited image, it says it's a UI image. Perfect. Now, what if we can't get an edited image? Well, then we'll see if we can get an original image with else if let, and we'll call this original image equals, and then the code I need is going to be almost identical to these two pieces that I've highlighted up here. So I'm going to command C paste them down below, don't forget to add the close and curly, but then change the reference to edited image in the first and second line to original image. Just make sure you set it in both places. Then the only thing left to do after the if else statement is to dismiss, that closes the image picker controller, animated true, completion handler nil, and we can build and run and we're done. Now sure, you can bip that creepy clown, take that. But we can also add our own images. Click on the camera icon. Action sheet alert shows up. Click Photo Library. Now the standard iOS simulator photo library has photos of flowers. Punching flowers doesn't relieve much aggression. I've never wanted to do that. 
But you can grab any PNG or JPEG from the desktop, as I'm doing here, and drag it right into the open photos area in the simulator. This imports it into the simulator, so it's now in the instance of the iPhone that I'm simulating. So for me, this is the simulated iPhone 11 Pro, but it's not in the instance of any of the other iPhones that I'd simulate. But you can drag other photos in there if you'd like. And now look what I put in here. That worldwide villain, the coronavirus. That's something I'd like to punch. So now, if I click on the bip the guy back arrow in the upper left-hand corner of the simulator, I'm back in the UI image picker controller, I can click on any of these folders, I'll click recent, I see that dastardly virus, I'll click that, now to relate this to our code, when we pressed the photo library button in the action sheet, this called the access photo library function that we wrote. In here, we set the image picker controller source type to photo library. Then we presented the image picker controller. Then iOS and all the built-in functionality for the image picker controller takes over from there. It's handling all the stuff you see on screen that's related to how we can navigate through and select images. But now, when I select an image, the built-in code for the image picker controller is done. It then calls its delegate which is our view controller class, our code that we wrote in viewcontroller.swift. And it says, run, did finish picking media with info. Now in there, our code checks the image. I haven't modified this image, so there's no edited image. So we use the original image. We set image view dot image to the original image. And then when we call dismiss, oh, we see the ghastly COVID in our app. Smack that virus. Bam, 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 bam. That's one way to beat the virus. Ah, that's most satisfying. Now what about the camera option? Now let's test things out on an actual device. So here's my personal iPhone launching the app. We can bip the clown. Let's click the camera icon. And here's our camera. We're looking around the lab. Let's see if there's some stuff we want to bip. I'd never punch levitating baby Yoda. I am not a stormtrooper. How about you, baby Groot? Should we bip you? I'll take that as a no. Super fan? I don't think so. Master Yoda, how dare we try to bip you? What do you say to that? Seeking Professor G, you are. Come to the right place you have. Oh, well, that is correct. You have found where Prof G is. And I see you build apps, Yoda. You got your app sticker. You must have tweeted with the iOS Code Crush hashtag. How about over here? We'd never bip Baldwin. What about up here? Ho-ho! That looks like Barty Crouch Jr. impersonating Mad-Eye Moody. This guy's worthy of a bip. Let's snap his picture. I built this, it's running a little Arduino sketch, animating with a little LCD screen. Unfortunately, the refresh rate doesn't capture very well on an iPhone. Let's try to get another snap. We still get the refresh line. But let's use this photo. <laughs> Party Crouch Jr., we're gonna beat you! Ho ho! The app works great! Now there's a lot more we could do with this app, including saving the default image so that instead of the clown showing up, the last image we selected will show up. But I think we covered enough for a most impressive app, and we'll leave some of these additional concepts for later apps we'll build. Now you can challenge yourself to take what you've learned in these later apps and make this app even better. But I very much hope you've enjoyed this. We've covered a lot of ground, including the iOS coordinate system, UI view animations and various parameters, including spring dynamics, durations, delays, animation curves, alpha animation, color animation, alerts and action sheets, handling gestures, including the tap gesture recognizer. We learned to use the UI image picker controller for accessing both the photo library and the device camera. Swifter, I hope you're feeling like you've gotten your aggression out, but even more importantly, that you're gaining even more swiftacular skills. And if you're so inclined, don't forget to tweet a photo of your learning in this video series with the iOS Code Crush hashtag for a chance to be selected for one of the ultra cool My Mac Builds Apps laptop stickers. Congratulations on finishing yet another app. Keep at it.